Hey, welcome back everybody and welcome for the second video of the day, developing a volume formula. The last issue we did a whole thing on using unit cubes or cubic units so that way we could uh, basically count what the volume is. Today we're actually going to look at the rectangular prisms to see what's going on. All right, so we're buying a fish tank here. Now, not every question is just find the volume. We have to make sure that we always understand every part of a question, okay? So it starts off that the pet store has a fish tank and its rectangular prism measures five feet long, which we talked about in the other lesson, that length is a horizontal measure, all right? So it's five feet. It's two feet wide, which in this picture is a little bit hard to see, but it goes kind of diagonal. And then uh, it's four feet high. So our height, which is our vertical, is four feet. Now I know it's really kind of hard to see that width going back um, diagonally, but it's there and we know it. That's not what the question asks though. It doesn't just say, find the volume. If you keep reading, it says, Kevin needs to find a fish tank that has a volume of at least 35 cubic feet. Will this be big enough? So in the end, we're gonna have to compare our volume to the 35 standard. Right? It's not just finding the volume and, no, I got my answer. It's not how it works. So if you remember yesterday, volume was length times width times height. And whatever we're putting this in, it's always going to be cubic units. All right, Whether it's inches, feet, centimeters, millimeters, things like that. It's got to be cubic because we're working with three different dimensions. All right, A length. Where is my cursor? A width and a height. So, without a further ado, we have five times four times two. It does not matter which order we multiply them. We're going for ease. I could do four times two is eight, and then eight times five is 40. I could do five times four is 20 times two is 40. No matter how I do it, I'm going to get 40 feet cubed or cubic feet. All right? So, this fish tank is 40 cubic feet large. I needed to have at least 35. So because 40 is greater than 35, this is going to work out beautifully. Malcolm, poor Malcolm. You know, I'm pretty sure in every example in this book, poor Malcolm is always wrong. Does he give up? What does he do? Maybe he should start watching my videos. Okay, Malcolm, start watching my videos. Malcolm says that the volume of the aquarium would change if the dimensions were two feet long by four feet wide by five feet high. Do we agree? And we said no, we, we don't agree. First of all, Malcolm, you're always wrong. All right, watch my videos. Get with the program. Second, we also talked about the associative property of uh, multiplication where the order doesn't matter. I can multiply these first. I could multiply these first. It doesn't matter, because no matter what, I'm still gonna end up with those 40 cubic feet, no matter how I do it. So sorry, Malcolm, just because you change the numbers around doesn't mean that it's going to change the answer. Sorry, bud. Poor Malcolm. All right, give the dimensions of a different rectangular prism that also has a volume of 72 square, uh, cubic feet, sorry, not square, and explain how you decided. So we talked about this in class two. The biggest thing is no matter what, you need a length, a width, and a height to equal 72 cubic feet. Now, we're gonna assume that whatever number we're using is a foot, okay? Because I'm just gonna stick numbers down and I don't wanna waste time writing units. So we just have to think, how can I get to 72? Well, the first thing that pops in my head is my facts. I know eight times nine is 72, and any number times one is itself. That works. I also know that I have two factors in eight. I can break eight up. I'm gonna break it up like Bradjolina. Two times four equals eight, times nine equals 72. Let's break nine up for a minute. Let's leave the eight. I know three times three is nine. 
And then I'm going to have times 8 is 72. All these worked. I also had, uh, let's see, I, th I think Luke in class the other day, uh, 72 times 1 times 1 is 72 uh, feet cubed, and he's absolutely right. So that was awesome. I, uh, I was pretty happy with that. And, you know, there's a ton. I mean, we, we, as long as we can get the 72, we're good. Uh, I remember 12 and 6 was a big one. Uh, let's see, 12 times 6, oh, times 1, 72. Uh, you could do 3 times 4 times 6 equals 72. You could do 12 times 3 times 2, whatever. The whole idea is, as you can see, there are many ways to get the 72. But remember, we need to be able to not just construct numbers and make them larger. We need to be able to destruct numbers. <laughs> destruct. Destroy them. Go for it. Um, we need to be able to take them apart and work with them as well. All right, so a wooden block measures five centimeters long, three centimeters wide, two centimeters tall. They want me to draw this thing, label it, and find the volume. So the first thing I'm gonna teach you is how to draw a rectangular prism. I like to draw a rectangle to start, two-dimensional shape. Then a couple diagonal lines at each of those intersections. Draw a line straight down, draw a line straight across easiest way to draw a rectangular prism. So now I know, and I need to label this correctly, that my length is five centimeters long. I need to make sure that my horizontal number uh, is going to be labeled five centimeters because that is the length. The width, which is the diagonal line, is three centimeters. So I need to make sure that my diagonal line is three centimeters. And finally, uh, my height is two centimeters, and I need to make sure that that's also labeled two centimeters. Now, this is important. I know we talked about that. It doesn't matter how you multiply the numbers. You're going to get the same volume. True. But when you're buying something for your house or you're creating something or a building, whatever, if you don't have the right values in the right type of um, measurement, everything's going to be wrong. I mean, I could be building, say this is in um, feet, right? Let's say I'm building a box and I want it five feet tall. Well, that's only two feet tall. That's, you know, three feet short. I'm not going to reach the window I need to get up on or something like that. Who knows? Uh, maybe my length only needed to be two centimeters. If I made it five, maybe it's not going to fit through the doorway when I try to walk through, right? So there are reasons and to have your numbers in their specific place. When we multiply, it's not gonna matter, but labeling it does. So, without further ado, five times three times two. Well, I'm gonna make that six because that's a nice easy fact. Five times six is 30 cubic centimeters. And let's wrap it up by finding these volumes. Here's two more rectangular prisms. I have a length of nine, a width of two, and a height of four. So I have nine times two times four. Now when I'm thinking about this, I wanna make it easy on myself. I'm gonna make this eight times nine because that's a fact. However, I could have made it 18 times four. Who wants to multiply 18 times four? Nobody, do you know your 18 times tables? No, do you know your four times tables up to 18? No, stick with what you do know. Stick with what's smart. Make things easier on yourself. 8 times 5 times 4. And remember, we're going to work with yards here. <sighs> Again, I, I mean, I have a choice. I, to me, it's easy to make 8 times 5, 40, or to make 5 times um, 4, 20. That's no big deal. So either way I go, I'm going to be a happy guy. Let's go 40 times 4. What do I know? I know I have a 0, and then I know that I have 4 times 4, which is 16. That's all place value, kids. That's 0, 1, because anything times 0 is 0. 4 times 10 fours is 16 tens, which, you know, you need a 1 in the hundreds place, a little 6 in the tens. Keep that 0 on the ones, you get 160. It's a beautiful thing. And that is yards or cubic yards. That's all I got. Under 10 minutes. Have a good one.